Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sivram of iNoIndices.com. Hope I am audible to you. You are able to hear me, I suppose. Yes, fine. Thank you. Let me display it. Thanks, Adinda. Thanks, Sandra, for confirming it. Audibility is fine. Let me display the PowerPoint presentation. Asian Session Live Market Analysis for the week, May 28th to May 31st and also June 1st, which falls in this particular week. So whenever you come across a week wherein a particular month gets over and the new month starts, the market is expected to be much more volatile in a shorter time frame of 5 working days or 5 trading days. So market is expected to be very, very volatile during this particular month or sorry, week and be prepared and trade with hedging order or also trade carefully using the stop to limit the risk and also try to grab the profit. Don't aim for position trade. Whenever you find a good going, immediately book profit. Either you do a buy and sell trade or a sell and buy trade. And that is very essential during this sort of weeks wherein the month gets over and the new month starts. So today is 28th of May between 5 and 45, 5.45 GMT. I will be giving the Asian Session Live Market Analysis webinar. As usual, we will use the derived forecast which is derived from the statistical algorithm and which is being displayed on a daily basis in my website blog and also I give it on Monday and Thursday in Asian Session Live Market Analysis webinar. And so you can use it as a guiding factor for understanding the market. Besides, we do the market reading and that acts as a fine tuning of the forecast, a tool to fine tune the forecast and we try to identify the type of moves they try to do it in the market and accordingly decide on our trading. So in order to do the market reading, we first of all note down between 2.30 and 3.30 GMT, what is the high and the low they form. So after 3.30, around 3.31, we can make a note of the initial lows and the highs. They are set in four majors and two commodity pairs. And that act as a reference level for us to understand what sort of moves they are trying to do it. In the using the live market to quote page as the tool, we will try to derive it. And then try to see what moves they are trying to do it, in what sequence they could do it. All we track it using the session wise timing in, order, in GMT in order to understand how in a 24 hours market cycle they are trying to make up and down moves alternatively. And even though our trading market reading is going to be very effective still we do not want to take a chance so we try to use the trading strategy one of the basic trading strategy is use the hedging order when the position is taken and let it be 30 pips away from that of the position and once the market makes the move in line with our expectation and the position makes profit of 20 25 pips we try to keep stop at entry and remove the hedging order and in case if you are hedged, we handle the hedge effectively on the opposite side and try to book profit on that move also. So whenever there is a quick move happening in the market, we try to take the positions and when the market is holding near that of the high or holding near that of the low, we don't simply take the positions. We watch 30 minutes time frame from the session start. And during the early session or the late session of each of the three sessions of the day, namely Japanese, European and US sessions, we watch the early sessions or the late sessions and see whether the market is closer to low or closer to high. And if it is low and not breached that initial low, then we try to take the buy position. If it is near the high and not breached the high, we try to take a sell position. That sort of trades are being thought of using the trading strategy. So we use hedging order in order to limit the risk to 30 pips. Still, when it is hedged, we don't lose the position unlike that of the stop. 
So when you use the stop, the stop closes the original position, whereas when you use hedging, both the positions will be held in the platform. So like a trader who is holding a buy position in the market or like another trader holding a sell position in the market, we perceive the market objectively on either way moves and try to handle the both the sell as well as the buy positions and try to earn from that of the market. Because ultimately in the market, they can only do an upward move or a downward move and alternate them. And they cannot continuously drop for several days or continuously rise for several days. They have to necessarily make swings. Especially in the case of Vero and GBB, they try to make upward and the downward move alternatively. Now, after seeing the market today, you will be able to get convinced that that is what they are trying to do. So, let me give the link for the live market code page and try to focus the camera over that of the live market code page. Now, you can see that Euro is trading around 1.2588, 1.2590. You know that Friday, it was closing around 1.2515 and suddenly they made an upward gap opening and the low itself is 1.2560. From there they quickly gained the level to the close to that of the psychological level 1.26. So they raised it up to 1.2597 and holding around 1.2588 and 73 pips positive net change is seen. So the net change is nothing but the current market level when compared with it of the previous day US session close. So Friday is the earlier session. So Friday whatever the level they have closed from there the market euro has gained about 73 pips and USD yen has dropped about 27 pips from that of Friday close. GBB gained about 32 pips from that of Friday close. CHF has lost about 48 pips from the rough Friday close. Canadian dollar lost about 45 pips from the rough Friday close. That is USD CAD. And Australian dollar gained about 96 pips from the rough Friday close. So this is what it indicates. So with the help of the net changes, we try to find out whether they are doing the USD gaining move or the USD weakening move. So Euro is making USD weakening move. USDN is making USD weakening move, JBB is used, making USD weakening move. Whenever you find the numerator currencies are in positive net change, then we know that it is USD weakening move. Similarly, when the denominator currencies like EN, CHF, and Canadian dollar, when they show negative net change, USD CAD, when they show negative net change, we understand that they are making USD weakening move. So in all they are making the USD weakening move. So what it indicates, no contrarian move for the weak beginning. Instead straight away they had done the USD weakening move. So that means that till last week they have been handling the crosses effectively. And now they have come to that of the majors. If you see the crosses, for example, Euro Yen, which is making only 23 pips, and Euro JBB 29 pips and Euro CHF only 10 pips. So everywhere you find the net changes are very less when compared to that of the majors which have done the net changes. So some of that currencies like Euro New Zealand dollar, they only made about 84 pips because Aussie has gained more and New Zealand dollar also gained more. So you find such moves. Other than that, you find that majors are making much bigger moves when compared to that of the crosses. So that means what? In this particular week, they wanted to make aggressive moves in the case of majors in order to just act against that of the sentiment what they have created earlier. So earlier we know that they created the USD gaining sentiment or because of the European crisis, they exaggerated and they have been talking on a daily basis and then everybody thought that Euro is going to collapse and things like that. On Friday, they towards close also, they came to that of the all time low 1.2515 and later on now you see that they have already gained about 72 pips. So you might call it as a pullback in the case of 
these numerator currencies, but in the case of Australian dollar, they have gained already about 96 pips. And I have mentioned many times that whenever they gain more than 75 pips, net change in a particular currency, it is very unlikely they go in for a reversal on that particular day. So, you know that the commodity pairs lead the rally and lag behind. So, it is more likely that they could make more of USD weakening move from today onwards. That is what we try to derive it from that of the live market code page. Let me go back to that of the PowerPoint presentation. I explained it that we use the forecast as a guiding factor besides we do the market reading and use the trading strategy to limit the risk. So now we'll look into that of the market reading. So I already noted down because we are in already about 510 GMT. So the market I noted down at 330 GMT the initial lows and the highs in the case of the four majors and two commodity pairs. So in the case of Euro, 1.2560 was the low and they are not breached it, 1.2597 is also not breached. You can just look into that of the live market code page and confirm it whether they have breached the initial lows or the highs. And in the case of GBP, 1.5676 is the low, 1.5710 is the high. 78.38 is the low in the case of USDN, 79.73 is the high. And USDCH of 95.38 is the low, 95.72 is the high. Then Canadian dollar 1.0246 is the low, 1.0273 is the high. And there again, they are not breached. it. The Australian dollar 97.98 is the low and 98.64 is the high. That is also not breached. So in all the currencies, they made an upward. I mean, in the numerators, they made the upward gap opening and just continued the gain, but stopped cutting the high. In the case of the denominator currencies, they made the negative net change, but stopped cutting the low. So this is what you come across. Now, what could be the possible moves during this particular day? So first of all, we will see the forecast, and also from there, we derive how exactly the market reading also synchronizes with that. Now, swing and rise moves are expected during that of the Japanese session. They already made their swing and gained the level, and they have to make an upward opening after 5.30 GMT during that of the late Japanese session. So, I have given the session timings here, 0030 to 7 GMT is the Japanese session. And this is all the timings followed by that of the players, not by me. And the players follow it, so I track it. So 7.30 to 13 GMT is the European session. And 13.30 to 20.30 is the US session. So last 30 minutes, I mean one and a half hours, is the late session. 5.30 to 7 GMT will be the late session. And 7.30 to 9 GMT will be the early European session. Then 11.30 to 13 is the late European session. 13.30 to 15 GMT, one and a half hours from start, is the early US session. And 19 to 20.30 GMT will be the late US session. So these are all the timings. So I am just giving the first half of the session how they are expected to do, and the later half of the session how they are expected to do. That's what are given. Swing and rise moves are expected. So towards close, late session, they are expected to gain more level. Then European session swing and rise moves or they could continue their gain during that of the European session. Pretend as if they are going to drop and then start gaining the levels. And US session swing and firm up moves are expected. They are expected to slowly gain the level. So whenever they gain the levels very slowly without making any quick move, we know that it is an intentional move. So intentional move, either it could be on the upside or on the downside, but it will be slow moves. 
but the extended move is the one it will be a very quick move like a spike so very quick gain of 30 40 pips or 50 pips in one go and then stop getting the new high that could be the extended move that happens only for about two hours whereas the intentional move happens for about two sessions and the start of the third session. So you have to differentiate based on the momentum what you come across in the market, whether and also the time taken for the move, you can easily identify whether they are making extended move or an intentional move. Extended move, they just gain the levels for two hours afterwards stop cutting it. Whereas intentional move after two hours also, they continue to breach the high if they are gaining or continue to breach the low if they are losing the levels. So that way you can identify it. Then in between you come across session start time and the late sessions or in the late sessions they try to do the stop ends or a false move and also during the gap time between the sessions so 7 to 7.30 GMT and 13 to 13.30 GMT they are all gap times they try to do the false moves. False move, they go up to that of the high and reverse the market and breach the low. Or from the low, they, from the high, they come up to that of the low and without breaching the low, they come up to the high and breach the high and stay above. That is referred as a false move. Then after the false move only, they try to make an extended move on the upside or on the downside. Whereas intentional move, it is a slow gaining of the levels for two sessions. Then they do the stop ones and the false move. They are all 30 minutes time frame moves. And also during the mid session, you know, during the mid Japanese, mid Europe and mid US sessions, they try to make the swings between the low and the high. In the case of the majors, in order to handle the crosses. So besides, you come across one more interesting move, namely the extended stop and move. That they do it as a 150 pips downward move or 100 to 150 pips downward move and in a short time frame they simply reverse it in a matter of one hour or nowadays they are doing it in one to two sessions they reverse and gain back all the levels so now if you see Euro and GBP they just lost the levels on Friday and they regained the level from the start of the Japanese session so they have finished the extended downward stop end during the late US session on Friday and the early Japanese session today they simply reversed it. So somebody has taken a buy around 1.2580 on Friday. You would have calmly waited without closing that particular position. You will be able to see that he is at break even or with a nominal profit. And so when he comes out of that particular position out of fear that there be for the drop in the market and if the traders are afraid when they are holding at a higher level to go in for long, the next alternative will be the traders think that they gained the levels as a pullback or a correction, upward correction before for the downward move. They could go in for a sell and buy trade and after that how they are traders are being trapped by that of the players we need to see during that of the European session whether they gain and induce them to do the short covering or drop and induce them to do the profit booking that we can identify and try to see whom they are trying to trap during this particular day and this week so it is the last week of the month so more volatile moves are expected on the upward as well as the downward level. Let me explain to you what could be the possible moves in this particular week. Today is 28th as I explained that we will not come across weak beginning false move during first week and the last week of the month. They will only make either way volatile moves quickly. So there could be a two days of gain and just one day of holding high and the third day of fourth day of drop and the fifth day of rise and that sort of moves are expected to happen in this particular week. So 29th of May, that is tomorrow, they are expected to gain the levels very aggressively on the upside in the case of Euro and GBP. 
and on Wednesday they are expected to hold high and try to build or book profit with regard to their gained level with regard to their holding buy positions and also they are expected to build sell positions and on Thursday before that of the, the for the month end that is 31st of May they are expected to make slow intentional move of a drop and then buy again against that of what they have built sell positions on Wednesday and Thursday then try to buy back again on Thursday then Friday 1st of June you find that non-form payroll is expected to be announced and before the non-form payroll and after the non-form payroll announcement they are expected to gain the levels and this time the non-form payroll could be in the positive territory more than that of the market expectation that is what my algorithm says I am not sure whether it is going to be correct or not and in such a scenario people might expect because earlier occasions we have seen whenever the non-form payroll was in positive territory in the month of April and March they started losing the levels in the case of Euro and GBV and telling that it is a USD gaining because the US data was positive and last time in the month of uh, beginning of the May the non-form payroll was less than that of the market expectations and they continue to make the drop in the case of Euro and GBV and the explanation given was risk appetite but this time around they are not recognized any other currency pair or a commodity as a safe haven because earlier they used to talk more about safe haven currencies like USD, CHF, USD, Yen, Australian dollar and also gold, silver all those things. Now everything is fallen on US dollar. So US dollar was considered as a safe haven but this time when the non-form payroll is expected to be more than expected of the market. They could simply say that it is risk appetite. There is going to be a growth in US as well as other countries. Then the risk appetite could emerge and the traders could trade buy positions in the case of Euro and GBV after the rise and that may lead the market to gain more levels. And first week of June there will be more of a sideways move and from that of the second week of June because uh, first week of June from 4th to 8th you will find that ECP and BOE are expected to announce the raid. So the market is expected to make sideways move. Whenever there is a split with regard to non-form payroll, BOE and ECB interest rate decisions fall in next week then the players hold the market in order to make reactions for the ECB and BOE interest rate decisions make it more of a sideways move little bit of gain and little bit of drop and things like that and from that of the next week from 11th to 15th of June they are expected to make the intentional move on the upside you could come across more gaining more visible gains in the market and then everybody will say that now you find more gains in the case of Euro and GBV and people start discounting with regard to all the uh, discounting all the uh, decimal news which are emerged from that of Euro. So it is a question of only highlighting the news which is better or which is worst and things like that. So ultimately when people say that technically market is going up discounting all the fundamentals people have to believe it and start doing it ultimately what the players have done used this market sentiment and dropped and when you question on Friday when Euro and GBV dropped just like that who were the buyers because it was like a falling knife so nobody wanted to buy and carry the position to the next week I am very sure about it and whereas this week you find they have opened it upward so who are all the buyers at that time the players were the buyers when the traders were in distress to liquidate their long position out of the fear because many analysts are calling zero to go to 1.20 so why to take risk and blow off our account so they simply liquidated the 
positions. Now you find the players have already bought it and gained the levels and holding it higher and they say that now if you want you buy otherwise you sell. You do whatever you want. We know how to make the moves in a market. But the players are expected to trap alternatively the buyers as well as the sellers on a daily basis and a weekly basis, monthly basis etc. So they will not be penalizing all the time the buyers because they know very well when they just penalize the buyers whoever is buying near the low for a set for the day thinking that that could be the low they make for the lows and induce them to liquidate if they do it for a few days and even the strongest bull will turn bearish and start taking sell positions they know very well human psychology much better than any of the psychologists so when the traders take sell positions expecting to earn back all the last money because fundamentally euro looks very very weak then the players gain the levels then the traders in order to average their sell position try to take further sell positions during the rise and that leads to over trading so on the downside when they have been making several accounts would have been blown up because of margin call on the upside when they do it traders tend to do more of aggressive sell and sometimes they go in for increasing the quantity that suppose they have got one lakh I mean one lot sell positions and if the market has gained more then they try to multiply it like two lot sell, four lot sell, six lot sell without understanding whether the margin can hold such positions and when they make another hundred pips the margin call is expected to come on the upside. This is how they get the inside information from that of the various sources and try to trap the traders. So as a wise trader, we have to see that we should not become victim to this act again and again and try to see that the market is known to make volatile moves and whenever they make a quick move on the downside, understand they want to induce fear and buy at the bottom. And similarly, when they make a quick rise, understand that they wanted to quickly gain and create the bullish field and offload their buy positions. At that time, the traders turn bullish. So they create the traders to develop a different sentiment than that of the players actually have. So that we need to understand. So let me minimize the PowerPoint presentation and try to focus the camera over that of the live market code page. Then try to answer the questions which are asked here. Jack has got a question. Euro USD and GBV USD opened with a gap up. What is the significance of this move? Does it mean that the reversal of the down moves seen in the last week? Normally, whenever they open upward, technically people expect the gap to be filled in a day or two. And that is how the charts will look. And so people tend to take sell positions thinking that the gap will be filled. Sometimes they fill the gap, sometimes they don't fill the gap. So we need to understand what they are trying to do it. When they are simply holding near the high, not breaching the high, there is no point in taking a buy position after the gains. If they breach the initial high and stay above there for more than 10 minutes, then we can try to take a yeah, buy position as a technical trade, try to close it within the session or within the day, watching it and not to do a overnight trade so or a position trade. So at the moment it's a mid session, so it's going to be the start of the late session by 5.30 GMT. Then we will see how they are handling it. They are firming it up, so there is likely chance that they could breach the high, the initial high. If they breach the initial high and stay above there for more than 30 minutes, that is going to be the late session from 5.30 to 7 GMT. Then it will be one and a half hours during that time you can try to do the trade. 
buy above that of the initial high and try to book profit around 7 GMT when they firm up or at least keep stop at entry and wait for further gains without taking much of a chance. Then afterwards you come across the gap time between 7 and 7.30 GMT, they are expected to make the false move. So the false move can be on the upside or on the downside. So we have to find out whenever they gain quickly, the false move could be on the downside. Then afterwards during the session, they are expected to gain the level. See, they are gaining it quickly from the late sessions. You watch Australian dollar which has come to 60, 64 is a high. And it is 5702, 5710 is a high in the case of GBP, and 2597 is a high, 2594 they are holding it. Just in a matter of another 2 3 minutes, they are expected to breach the high. So, you may say that when you are able to read it, why not I buy here and just book 10 pips profit? So, if you go in for scalping, then you fail to perceive the bigger moves in the market. You focus on the scalping, try to earn 10, 15 pips and when you miss the bigger moves, you become distressed and try to take some positions and there it might lead to some emotional decisions and wrong trading etc. So just avoid doing scalping and focus on at least swing, swing trades. In a trade, we should be able to find derive what could be the entry level and the exit level and the stop level and try to develop a straight setup and then try to wait for about one, one and a half hours or two hours and try to put a profit of 45 to 75 pips and that could be the ideal way of trading in order to build the equity and if you do more of a scalping then invariably you find it might be adding 10, 10 pips in each trade and one trade if it goes against you might lose about 50 to 60 pips and all the gains will be lost then that may lead you to become an addict to trading aiming for 5 pips 10 pips etc not really making a headway in making money from that of the market so what is the significance of this actually they just fooled on friday the traders on Thursday as well as they gained the levels and lost all the levels what they gained on during the European session on Thursday and Friday that would have given that impression to the traders Euro is not going to look up but new week they use new story and opened it with an upward gap opening so automatically when they open with an upward gap then people try to think that it is a pullback we will try to take a sell position so Probably if the high has been set afterwards they are not breaching the high, we will try to take a sell or any technical resistance level they will try to take a sell and so buy and sell trading opportunity is missed so obviously the traders will look for sell and buy trade, they cut the high in the case of hero. Late sessions they come to that of the majors you can see that. So if you see that what they are doing is being demonstrated in the live market code page and what their intentions on things like that then you make your market reading very simple using the live market code page and see how they are handling the market you will find that the trading decisions can be taken very fast so it is not the weak beginning false move and they intend to gain the levels this week and still Australian dollar they are not cut the high, GBB they are not cut the high, only in the case of Euro they have cut the high by 3 pips. How? They are making 2 pips, 3 pips jump. That means they place a bigger order and only then they can move the market upward. So if you place in your online trading platform any order like 1.26 when the market is around 1.2588, it will not move the market, only they can move the market and when they are capable of moving the market, we know very well they are the one who can make upward or the downward moves in the market and not ordinary traders and that has to be done with the volume. So everybody is now talking about the players, earlier everybody was telling that there is a trillion dollar market nobody can manipulate and no one can really push the market on the upside or the downside. It is a collective action.
and that is why that is the main reason we go in for the exponential analysis whenever it is a collective move we won't be knowing how the individuals are trying to think so we go in for an exponential analysis what is that we try to take the extremes of those thinking whether the traders want to take the buy position or the sell positions and try to correlate and that is we go in for an exponential of each of the value and try to connect it and then you find that is also not working then people go in for the dynamic moving averages so alternatively when such moves happen without understanding it is a man made market and man can men can alone move the market either on the upside or the downside not many people are blessed with the capability of placing very big orders in the market so yeah even a richer man or a person who has got enough money to trade can take about 5 lots or 10 lots or 50 lots 100 lots not like 10000 lots 50000 lots and things like that in each of the currencies so understand how big the players have to be and they use the bank terminals to place such orders and hit the stops on the upside and the downside on a daily basis so it is a, such a big conspiracy which is happening and still people are not willing to accept it it is like giving a definition for death and what could be what could happen after the death because these are all some of the mysteries nobody will be able to explain it so invariably there can be different views pertaining to that but we all know that as long as we are born on this earth one day we have to go in for the death and that is the ultimatum for everybody everybody knows about it but still to ask any doctor or anybody for that matter can you define death it is extremely difficult because the religious people may say something and the scientific people may something and there will be different type of opinion pertaining into that the market making is also of that nature and we know that beyond doubt it can be proved or it is something like whether god is there or not so we can understand or perceive beyond doubt such things happen but we don't have evidences to prove it and that is why the arguments continue so does that mean the reversal of the down move seen in the last week uh no they are not expected to make a big reversal as i explained monday tuesday wednesday as per my algorithm i can only talk in terms of my algorithm at the given moment so because market reading cannot be done for the next day using this sequential uh, market moves so they are expected to gain the levels up to thursday japanese session afterwards they are expected to go in for a profit booking move and friday they are expected to gain back the levels now gbp they have cut the high australian dollar they have cut the high now yash as today is holiday in us and swiss shall we expect more volatile moves yes and you know that uh just for about 5 6 months back whenever there was a holiday they were not making moves in the market when there is a partial holiday like in some countries it is holiday and certain other countries it is not holiday and things like that nowadays the players started making big moves again because they they take the thin volume condition as an advantage and gain the levels or lose the levels etc and they are able to achieve it only by doing such moves for 2 3 days earlier they used to do it finish it in one day and earn back earn the money what they intend to earn but nowadays they take about 2 3 weeks to earn that quantum of money because they share that money with various people so the people who have been enjoying the money they do not want any compromise no oh, market is dull so let me take only one fifth of that particular share and things like that they are not willing so they have to because they enjoyed the comfort and they know that they have to necessarily spend so much of money to keep their lifestyle 
so they do not want to compromise so the players have to slog and earn the money more of sharing than for themselves that is why you find even if they are players thinking that they are minting billions they can also get frustrations as long as they are human and they can also become fatigue as long as they are human they cannot become god just by minting money from the other market then shall how much more upward move can we expect in australian dollar Aussie has done the lower level consolidation to make a gain according to my algorithm it can go back to that of 1.05 to 1.06 level but how long it is going to take we have to just question and keep our fingers crossed and watch e0 expected to reach 1.32 in next month yes it's most likely take pull then balaji shall we expect more contrarian moves this week may not be much of a contrarian move in this week and they might focus more on the majors and when the major see when euro and gbp move in tandem there might be variation with regard to the pip change euro has gained about 91 pips gbp has gained only about 49 pips australian dollar has gained about 111 pips and that is still a contrarian move because euro gained more when compared to the rest of gbp similarly euro gained about 91 pips whereas usdch of it dropped only 56 pips it is supposed to drop more whereas it has dropped less similarly australian dollar gained about 111 pips whereas usd cad has gained lost only 48 pips so less than 50% so you find that there is a variation because of that the crosses might be making swings but not a very significant swing during the last week and they will simply hold it and accumulate the buy positions like we see in the case of uh, euro yen and gbp yen they will be making a narrow range swings of 50 60 pips and try to accumulate at the lower level the buy positions but they may not give profit booking opportunities so it is similar to that of the session start and earlier the late sessions when they focus on the majors the first week and the last week they focus on the majors mostly so you have to be very very careful while doing the trades in the case of majors they will make very aggressive moves you can really make money if you read their type of market moves properly otherwise it, many of the traders i hear that during the last week and the first week of the month they get the margin call because they don't perceive the market properly then all the sector bank code page works last week and today yeah that is what they would have smelled that people have started using it so they had just stopped it then so so b and i also noticed in sector bank code page and the earlier uh the links were all available when you clicked the links there they were all going to the page not available condition i think by uh, when they had done some server change and things like that page changes and that started appearing in our code pages and now they have rectified it i think so we may not be able to get it that's a sun b has the market always been like this manipulated yeah obviously it has to be manipulated and even one pip rise cannot be done using a trading platform understand when all traders you know those who are attending the webinars and also those who are visiting fx street all decide to buy euro you can't even make one pip rise we can only buy around 1.2605 whatever the buy orders we give the players can just sell it to us so we cannot placing orders in platform make one pip rise or one pip drop in the market and it has to be done from that of the bank terminal okay no more questions let me go back to that of the powerpoint presentation they have breached the high in the case of gb euro and now 1.2608 is the high as i said that technically they wanted to breach and just continue firm up and 
So when the traders think that it is a pullback, they will just induce them to stop out. See how cleverly they are making, they create the market sentiment and act against that of the traders. They breached in the case of GBB the high, they breached in the case of uh, USDN low, now it has become 79.34 and 95.37, one pip cut. When Euro has breached about uh, 11 pips, CHF has cut only one pip. That means CHF is not expected to drop very big when compared to Euro rise. So in that process, Euro CHF is expected to slowly gain. Last week, they just made a quick upward move and drop in the case of Euro CHF after a prolonged consolidation around 1.2010 level. And they are expected to gain the level slowly when they make this sort of contrarian move. More gain in the case of Euro and less drop in the case of CHF. After gaining it, they may make less drop. After gaining some less drop. So ultimately, USD CHF is also come to parity in a shorter time frame. Then Canadian dollar, they breached the low in the case of Canadian dollar, 1.0243 has become the new low, just three pips back, whereas in the case of Australian dollar, 1.9871 has become the high, that is about seven pips rise, whereas here only three pips drop. So you find that Denominator currencies are making lesser drop when compared to that of gains in the case of numerator. So read it. That is the type of contrarian move. They will do it during that of the first and the last week of the month. This time you find that uh, the month of May gets over in this week and the new month, June starts by Friday. All the volatility could be finished within this particular week. So when they want to finish all the volatility within a week, the volatility could be very aggressive. When normally, uh, when the month gets over in a week and the new month starts in another week, they take about 15 days to make volatile moves. Whereas this time, they are already done in the case of May. So last week of the May, they are expected to make aggressive moves and then they are expected to continue gaining moves in the month of June and July. We could see for the slide in the market in the month of August. So I take this opportunity to thank FX Street and also you people who have come here to listen to my webinar. I'll come back on Thursday, the 31st of May, the last day of the month, and take Asian Session Live Market Analysis and also I will review the forecast, what I have given for four days and also what I give it in my blog on a daily basis. Just to see whether the market has moved in tandem with that of the expectations or against it. I will objectively review it and afterwards further reading I will try to do it for Thursday and Friday, the late uh, days of the week. So you will find how exactly the market he is making the moves. Once you understand this is what the type of move in sequence they are expected to make, you will get rid of the market fear. Then afterwards your trades will become very, very sensible. So thank you one and all. See you on Thursday.